Hi, I'm Lee, and welcome to my studio and YouTube channel where I discuss tips, tricks, and techniques for oil and acrylic painters. In this episode, we're going to discuss glazing techniques. So, what is glazing? Well, glazing is basically just, uh, just transparent paint over a surface. So, you could use something like uh, uh, phthalo green, ultramarine, uh, Indian yellow, uh, or uh, even a quinacrone rose over a grisaille painting. Um, I've created a quick example in Photoshop where I glaze over a black and white or grisaille Mona Lisa. Or to use an example from one of my own paintings, an atmospheric um, uh, scene above and below the ocean surface where the, uh, I've glazed a Prussian blue over, a, um, over the bottom of the area to create sort of this real deep oceanic effect. Basically, you use this technique to achieve an effect that wouldn't be possible with Alla Prima or wet into wet. Now, glazing is a wonderful technique and a wonderful tool, but if, you're, if the foundation of your painting, like the drawing and the values aren't sound, well, this isn't gonna save you. So definitely don't slouch on those drawings and values. Another thing to take into account is these are gonna be the topmost layers of your painting. So at this point, you're not gonna to want to use uh, water, in acrylics or, or OMS or odor, odorless mineral spirits and oils to try and, and thin out your layers. You want to use mediums at this point or even better to use real thin layers of paint that has no extra medium in it. I'll have a future video on oil and acrylic mediums, but for now I'll have a few uh, suggestions later in the video when we begin actually painting. Regardless if you use oil or acrylics, your paints will either be opaque, semi-opaque, semi-transparent, or transparent. 95% of the time, we're going to be reaching for those transparent or semi-transparent tubes of paint for glazing. Each manufacturer has their own way of noting the transparency on a tube of paint. Some companies will literally spell it out for us, such as here. Other manufacturers will use iconography, such as blocks. While others will use bar graphs. Okay, so let's get some uh, acrylic glazing medium onto our acrylic. Just get a little bit in there like that. Again, a little bit goes a long way. And uh, one other thing I think I, I'd like to recommend, uh, I personally use is slow dry medium. Now slow dry medium won't, uh, won't open up your mediums after it's dry. It just simply slows the, the, the paint down. Uh, especially here in Phoenix, when it gets super dry, it, it, can, it can really be a bit of a, bit of a much so what we'll do is just throw a little bit in here and you can use up to a full uh one-to-one -one ratio but i'm going to just grab just a little bit on there just so that we got something going on and a palette knife and then let's begin mixing this up so There we go. So there we have sort of a nice thick. Now remember, because this is acrylic um, and glazing is going to be on the top layers of your paint, you really don't want to use water at this stage because water will uh, break down your uh, film, the, the paint medium. These higher layers, you really want to stay away from uh, breaking the bonds of your paint. All right, so now you can kind of see we got sort of this nice kind of glaze. There we go. And see how it's not super wet, right? It's not goopy. So then what we can do is we can take a brush. I'll just grab this guy. I'm just gonna take a brush and grab this. And see how you can just kind of glaze with it. And there we go. Yeah, so, so oop, there we go. And you typically want to use a soft uh, bristle brush. You won't. You don't typically want to use a, a a real like a hogs hogs bristle or anything like that. And you get some really nice thin glazes going on here. And because it's still it has that slow dry medium, you can also just get a little bit. So you can just kind of wipe it off if you don't like it. Eh, don't like it right there, right? Don't like it right there. It's fine. 
Uh, but typically, so you can get as thick, you get really dark. You can let this dry and get it even darker once it's dried. Or you can get super light. And because we put in the glazing medium, uh, because we put in the glazing medium and uh, a little bit of the open, we can get really thin. So then we get really thin this thing out. So you can get really light with your glazes too. Look at that, look at that. That's really nice. So you can get pretty dark or pretty light. And that's with uh, acrylic mediums. Uh, remember, uh, with acrylic, make sure you um, make sure you're using glazing medium. And uh, I, again, I would uh, highly recommend using a little bit of uh, a slow dry medium, so to help kind of move things along. And then, as for oil, so I have, oops. Uh, so I have this look and fine detail. Because you want to only use a little bit at a time with this liquid fine detail, I would recommend using a syringe. Now this doesn't have a needle or anything like that. It's not going to poke you. It's, uh, it's just a little bit of a syringe. Uh, you can get these on Amazon for real cheap. It's just a, see, there you go. And so what you can do is just kind of slowly squeeze out because it's just, you have a lot of control. If, it, if you goop out like this, there's just so much. And so what you can do is just simply squeeze out a little bit. And I'm going to just squeeze out just a little bit. So see how much control I have using something like this. And so now what you can do is just use a completely different. Again, we're going to try to sequester and keep these separated and really open this up. Ooh, there we go. And there we have a nice fluidness to it. We could probably get a little bit more in there, but oil just usually will have a little bit more of a tackiness to it. Now, again, remember, we don't want to use, we don't want to use uh, OMS or turpentine on these top layers. We want to keep, uh, uh, keep from doing that. So it's right there. And I'll use a brush that we've used. So we'll just take this. And again, you do the exact same thing where you can get as dark as you want, or you can get as light, or you can get like super light. You get a little bit more control. You can also scumble with it. This is what I'm doing with this, it's called scumbling. You can do this a little bit with uh, opaque paints. So you can get in varying degrees. And then I'll just take some of the paint off. I'm not, and I just took some of the paint off and I'm not going to dip back in here. I can just, because it's oil, I can just really get thin, like subtle, real subtle. So what I have here is just a piece of paper that uh, just toned tan paper that you can get from an art, art supply store. And I've treated it or just basically painted all over it with a uh, matte medium. That way it, um, uh, sequesters the, the paper from uh, the oil paint that I'm going to use to glaze over this. These are actually uh, some quick gemstones, if you will, that I've uh, painted with just acrylic paint. Uh, the overarching theme of this is going to be using uh, Thalo Green Yellow Shade. This is uh, pigment, uh, pigment 36. And I'm going to be using this for, uh, I'm going to be glazing over all these with the uh, oil equ equivalent, this guy right here, uh, because it's a nice transparent color. I've used, so let's kind of go over what this is about. So I have values one through 10. So values basically from one to 10. All of these values correspond in here. And value six through 10, I've used just this. That way we can see, like, as, as we, you'll see as we gla start glazing, it'll darken our, our uh, gemstones. And because we're using emerald green, show you real quick, here we are. So we have a little color chart. All right, so emerald green is gonna be our, <clears throat> is gonna be our uh, primary. This is the, 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 the our uh, monochromatic, right? So this is what we're gonna start with. 
Uh, so it's basically, we're gonna be doing Thalo Green over Thalo Green. Over here, we're gonna do Thalo Green over an analogous color, which would be Yellow Green, this guy right here. Now, I could have used Blue Green, but I just chose this since we're going Emerald. Uh, now, if we take the uh, green and come down, it would be red, so I've taken the complementary of green over Emerald Green, and we're gonna see how uh, this uh, uh, glazes over its its, its uh, opposite because typically it'll turn gray when you mix them so this should be interesting and to add a little bit of uh, extra flavor I've done a uh, complementary a split complementary which is uh, red orange and red violet and then I've done a uh, tertiary or triad which is if we just follow our triad around over here that would be orange from our green and then from our yellow this is our, tert our uh, tetrad <laughs> tetrad and that's just going from here to here. And so that is our yellow orange. So we're gonna see how glazing affects all these different variables uh, with just a single color. So let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna take this, uh, this is oil paint or emerald green that I just mixed up all nice and pretty. So uh, let's get started on uh, this guy and work through our uh, colors. Set this off to the side and let's jam. Let's start with our value study, beginning with our values one through 10. One through 10 is uh, just black through, black, uh, black through white. And what this does is it allows us to see how just a plain black and white Versailles painting works. And we can just wipe off some of the excess to bring out the highlights. And then as we move over into just the value six through, t uh, six through 10, you can, notice, you can see that the darks um, are much, much lighter. And this allows for more, uh, a little more richness, and you can use the the, the glaze to actually add the um, uh, add the shadows. And you have a little more saturation in your values, and then moving on to our monochromatic, you can see it almost disappears. Uh, until we begin adding a little bit, uh, just, just until we start pulling out some of the highlights and adding some more of the shadows. And here you can see there's even more saturation. Tighten that up a little bit, there we go. Wipe that out. Moving on to our analogous. We start to add a little more complexity, a little more richness uh, in, our, in our gemstone. Uh, there's more, there's, um, you have the glaze, but you also have the yellow coming through that helps, <clears throat> helps bring it out. And you can see, you know, right there, just the, the difference between all four of these top layer, uh, top uh, gemstones by using just a little subtle difference of, um, all right. And now moving on to our complimentary. Complimentary is, I really like, I really liked how this one turned out. Uh, because you, you know, typically with 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 your opposites, they'll they'll cancel each other out and, and just gray down. But with uh, green into uh, green into uh, green over red, it it really creates this beautiful um, effect that I really really like, and I uh, might have to add this to my repertoire. <laughs> so, but uh, anyway, so let's move on to split complementary. This you can kind of see, uh, it's very similar to our complementary, uh, just by the nature of it. And there we go. Moving on to our triad. This one I deliberately uh, kept it really, really light on the glaze, just to show that <clears throat> you can have the orange kind of come through a little bit to create a, 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 an effect that you wouldn't be able to do with with a uh, wet into wet or a la prima. Yeah, there we go. You can see to see just a little bit and you can add an effect that just kind of adds this dimension to the orange that wouldn't be possible. Yeah. And then finally we'll jam on our tetrad. There we go. Yeah. And then again, this is uh, just 
uh, you know, no stone unturned on uh, how glazing works. <laughs> so I really like how this one turned out too. There's there's a lot more yellow, uh, saturated yellow in the uh, in this gemstone. I really like this effect as well. Um, so these are just some really cool effects that you can get with uh, with all your uh, with all these colors. Okay, and so as we pan out, you can see before and after, and you can really get a get a feel for uh, the different effects that you can get with just a single pigment. At this point, you can begin bringing in a titanium white or cadmium yellow to uh, begin bringing out the highlights. So hopefully you found this video helpful. I know glazing can seem a little challenging at times, and hopefully this will help remove some of that mystery. Or if you just uh, if you're already familiar with glazing, you've learned one or two new tricks. Uh, I got a couple more videos coming out and um, later this year with uh, uh, oil mediums, uh, acrylic mediums, surfaces, all, all kinds of stuff. So feel free to leave a comment below if you have any questions about this video. And uh, I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next video.